Hi, I want to talk about some pearls and pitfalls in cases with zonulopathy. These are my financial disclosures. Nothing will impact the subject matter of this talk. First of all, you got to have the right tools. You know, when you have a case that's going to be complicated, you want to make sure you have everything in one spot. And for a case with loose zonules, I'd certainly recommend a capsular tension ring, maybe an Ahmed segment. Uh, you're going to need some, some capsular hooks, maybe a Malugan ring or something to, to hold the iris open. Plenty of micro forceps. I like to use my Jerry Garcia handles because he knows a lot about rock and roll and these lenses rock and roll. Suture, you might want some tenopolypropylene, maybe some, uh, some Gore-Tex suture, and this is a 6O polypropylene coming out of a 5O polypropylene box. You want them all together in the OR and ready to go. Now the capsulorexis is maybe the first time you'll notice is onulopathy. Here you can see that lens is rock and rolling when I try to make the the capsulorexis, and you can see those wrinkles in the anterior capsule. So you can actually use a second instrument to either push into the lens material to hold the lens in place, or here I'm grabbing the actual rexus to center the lens, while with another hand I complete the capsulorexis. Not a, not a real easy move. Now in some cases, once the rexus is started, you really can't, even with a second instrument, get that lens centered properly. So placing some capsular support hooks to reposition the lens to, to then allow completion of the rexus can be helpful. But you gotta be very careful not to put too much strain in the capsule or you'll end up with a radial tear out. So it's a careful balancing of forces, but you can see you can get the capsular rexus completed. Now, staining in zonulopathy can be a little bit different. Tripan blue is often needed in these more mature, loose lenses, but you wouldn't put this under BSS or air as you can stain the vitreous. Just simply paint the anterior capsule, then chase out the residual viscoelastic with, uh, with your OVD. Sorry, chase out the residual tripan blue with additional OVD. And here in fast forward, you can see we're carefully able to get this capsular rexus completed without the use of additional instrumentation, but you can see the lens moving around. Now we've mentioned capsular stability hooks a few times and many people will talk about using iris hooks as a capsular stability hook, but iris hooks really don't work that well. They may hold the capsular rexus in place, but they're not adding any support where the zonules are not or are dysfunctional. You see, an iris hook is going to hold only at the capsular rexus edge, which is fine, that'll help keep the capsular rexus centered, but when you go in with your eye or phaco, you can still pull the equator of the lens into the instrument. A capsular hook is going to go all the way out to the equator and add like an artificial zonule out there. So you can go in with your instrumentation. You're not going to pull the equator of the lens in. Now some tips to get these capsular hooks in place. You know, after or even before you've completed your capsular rexus, place a little OVD underneath the anterior rexus, and that's going to make a little space for these hooks to be placed. Depending on the level of zonular instability, you may need one, two, three, or even four of these hooks. And don't tighten the hooks all the way down until all three or four of them are placed. Then carefully balance the tension of the hook. And these will really hold things in place well for you, allowing you to do your standard cataract surgery. But look here, those little legs sticking out of the eye will bump against the lid speculum. I've had them stick on the drape, and they can actually cause a little damage inside the eye as you're trying to get your already complicated surgery going. So these are disposable capsule hooks and you can cut them. So by cutting the edges off, you take them away from the edge of the drape and the lid speculum, allowing you to have a little bit more mobility and room with the, with the eye moving. Now, capsular tension rings are going to be necessary. They can go in a, a, a tons of different ways, but if you're using a capsular support hook, you're going to need a CTR. These can be put in in the standard technique, or you can see here an interesting way down the corner uh, of the screen using a Tenno nylon suture to help put the, the, the CTR in, and it also puts the CTR on a leash, so in event you have to take it out, it's not so hard to do. Now, if a CTR alone is not enough, you may need to use something like an Ahmed segment, and here's where our Gore-Tex suture comes into play. And putting a suturable segment or using a suturable CTR may become necessary when dealing with cases of more severe zonular instability. And last but not least, when you have a loose zonule, you have to be ready to do a vitrectomy. So it's not uncommon to see vitreous prolapse in these cases, and you have to be ready and comfortable with the anterior vitrectomy. Definitely use triamcinolone, separate the infusion line from the vitrector, and if you're not comfortable doing a vitrectomy, maybe operate with a vitreoretinal surgeon. So early recognition of zonular stability is critical in having the proper instrumentation in the OR for you. 
knowing how and when to use these devices is critical, and knowing when to place a capsular tension ring is pivotal to success. Capsular support hooks and rings are only part of the job, and you may need other devices such as Ahmed segments and sutures. Be ready to perform the anterior vitrectomy or posterior vitrectomy, and if you're not comfortable with it, have somebody with you who is. Thank you very much.